<laughs> the next season of drone racing is almost here and I am so excited because there are going to be three local race directors putting on races. What does that mean? It means a lot of racing. Hopefully if you can't make one this week, there's another one next week for you. Anyway, for the races I've been scheduling, I've been thinking about setting up a spec class. A spec class is where everybody flies the same quadcopter with all the same parts, same motors, same speed controller, same flyboard, same camera. That way, when we have races, it's really judging a pilot's skill versus another pilot's skill. Now, why spec class racing? Well, sometimes the better parts uh, cost more money and they perform better. So the people with more money have a little advantage over those who don't have as much money. Another thing is, another bigger reason, is because there's a lot of people who don't know what's fastest and what's the best thing to buy. So they end up with something that's kind of mediocre and they're never going to have a chance to win because everyone else's quads are so much faster. Now Multi-GP tried to institute a spec class and it didn't really go so well. I mean, and by go so well, I really mean how many spec class races did you have locally in your area? Us? None. How many uh, class, how many race uh, spec races did you see that were actually scheduled? No. Me? None. How many, how many official spec class races were there in any kind of multi-GP sponsored race? I don't know, there might have been some, but I never heard of any of them. So there's a few problems that spec racing in general brings along with it. So the first big hurdle to get over is, of course, money. It's gonna cost a lot of money to build another quad. Now another, a lot of money is relative, depending on who you are and how much money you make, but it's gonna cost some money to build another quad. And some people might say, well, I already have too many quads, so just forget it, I'm not gonna do this. I don't have enough money, I don't have enough interest, and also I don't wanna build something I'm not gonna fly. The next hurdle to get over is going to be availability. Do you buy parts that are local to your region, or do you buy parts that are available overseas? Do you buy parts that have uh, a lot of replacement parts available? Because if replacement parts aren't available, you're gonna have a lot of people who aren't able to race simply because their quads are broken. And that stinks because that's really no fault of your own. And so it'd be a lot better if parts were readily available. Now, do you also, do you wanna focus on cheap parts where people are going to pay less money to get into, drone, into the spec class? That'll probably help you get more people interested, but it may not help with quality parts. Uh, having quality parts may help people stay in the air longer and not crash as often and not break as many parts. But if you go with quality parts, the quality parts are usually gonna be a little bit more expensive and it's gonna take some people out of, of the races because they won't wanna spend that much money on them. And the last thing about this is, which parts are you gonna be, are people going to be allowed to swap out? If they don't like the field of view in their camera, can they pull the camera out and put another one in? If they do, you know, that's fine as long as it's in accordance with the rules. If a motor breaks and they replace the motor with a different one, hopefully not. If this is a spec class, the whole point is to keep quads as close to similar, close to the same as possible, which would really mean you're not really gonna have anything that's not spec, but I, I'd be a little leaning on the batteries just because I know sometimes batteries go on sale. The last hurdle to get over with this is the racing itself. Are there gonna be a lot of races scheduled that are actually spec races? And will there be a lot of our pilots that are wanting to join in and be part of the spec racing? Without a lot of pilots and a lot of interaction, there's not gonna be a lot of you know fun when you're racing by yourself or with two other people. Um, is this, and also the, the best question is, is the spec quad gonna be good enough to compete with the non-spec quads after the racing season is over for the spec quad? Do I just need to, is it gonna have any value to it when I'm done? Can I just sell it and get most of my money back? Those are some of, those are just three of the hurdles it's gonna to take to uh, get over while we're talking about spec racing. So there, there are three easy solutions and a couple more solutions that I've come up with that would make spec racing successful. Now the first one is the easiest one. Get a quad like this. This is the Wizard X220. This thing comes in a box like this and is ready to fly. You pull this out and add your own receiver, do a little tuning and you're done. Now, some people will say, well, your tuning has to be standard too. Well, if you can, that'd be great. If you have someone who's really good at tuning and can share that with everybody else, that'd be good. But the main thing is that this is easy to buy. You just buy one thing and it's all here. There's no assembly required. It's all together, ready to go. And you can't mess up buying the wrong parts and say, oh, I thought I was building the spec racer. I thought that was part of the spec. No, if it didn't come in this box, it's not part of the spec. That's the first easy solution. Another easy, easy solution is to buy, build something or make something a spec that a lot of people don't have. 
like a three inch quad racer like this. This is a little three inch with Cobra motors and 20 by 20 flight board and ESC. Now if you make this a spec, this is gonna be a pretty fun quad. A lot of people don't have three inch quads already and it'll be something new for them. And people will say, well, you know, I don't have a three inch and I wanted to build one anyway, so I'll go ahead and build one. Now when you build, if you design a three inch spec like this, you wanna make sure that it's gonna be able to compete with the five inch quads, at least the slower half of your group that has five inch quads. We had two three inch quads show up to one of our races and they got second and third in the race. They were stupid fast. The only person they couldn't beat was uh, race bot because the guy's too fast. Anyway, a three inch quad, you know, building this would be fun because a lot of people don't have it already. And so it'd be something new to add to their arsenal. Another idea that would be easy is to build your quad, not around a 4S battery, but instead build it around something that a lot of people already don't have again, a 6S, quad, a 6S battery. This is a 6S Bonka battery. And if I compare it up here next to this 4S, you can see it's quite a bit thicker. Now why go with 6S battery? Well, the same thing as before, a lot of people aren't gonna know what parts they should buy to build a 6S quad. So if you give them a list of parts and say, here's this list of quad parts that we think are really good and they're gonna be really competitive and they're gonna fly 6S and we're gonna make this happen next year or in these races, a lot of people will jump on board because they don't have 6S compatible quadcopters. So, those are the three easy solutions. The next one would be a little harder. The, uh, the, the next one would be uh, trying to get a local vendor to put together a quad kit for you. And then the nice thing about having a kit would be that people could go online to their website, buy the kit, and hopefully you could work with the vendor to make it a little bit cheaper to buy the parts all together from him. And it would also be less confusing for the people participating in this spec race because now they get all the quadcopter parts in one spot, it's gotta put them together. When you're sitting at the spec races, if you're, you wanna make sure to try not to alienate a lot of people because you know some people just won't wanna participate for one reason or another. So one thing, the last solution I've come up with is you set up a spec class and people can build to this class and they can race it. Then if you don't have the spec racer, you can still participate in the race, you can still have fun racing, you just aren't eligible for any points or for any uh, prizes in that race because it is a spec race, but you wanna let them race anyway. So that'd be a good solution. The other nice thing is, is that they may say, oh, you know what, your spec race quad is destroying mine, I'm gonna build one of those for the next race. Or they might say, your spec quad is terrible, I'm glad I didn't do it. But you know, by having a certain number of races scheduled, you're gonna have more people participate. But if you don't have anyone who's willing to set up those spec classes, you know, it's just gonna fizzle like it did with multi-GP. Hopefully they can turn something around and make it awesome and make, figure out some way to get a lot more par people participating. in that. Anyway, if you have any questions about spec racing, let me know down in the comments. If you have any better ideas about spec racing or a way to get more people to be involved in a spec race, let me know that too. So, if you have any questions, leave them down there. And as always, 